Hey everybody, how's it going? Happy Thursday. Welcome to another episode of In The Know Live Cooking Edition. I am Joey Skladani, last time I checked. <laughs> Welcome to my New York City studio. It is a disgusting, dreary, rainy day today. Not to be dramatic, but whatevs, that's my brand. Um, but the only cure for a rainy day in my book is avocado. And who doesn't like avocado? If you would have asked my eight-year-old self, I would have said me. <laughs> avocado is just not it, but the world loves avocado. That's why we have avocado shortages every once in a while. And today I've got three amazing dishes for you. They're super easy, super simple, like always. And uh, they're customizable because again, that's what we do here on In The Know Live. We make things that are going to taste good for you in your own kitchen. First up, I've got avocado toast three ways. Now, not to toot my own horn, but I do have a cookbook called Basic Bitchin, and I am eating avocado toast on the cover. So I like to call myself an expert when it comes to this dish. So you're welcome. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Moving on, we're gonna make a standard guacamole, and I know what you're probably thinking. I know how to make guac, and you probably do, but I wanna show you how to make it the best way possible. There are certain ingredients that I put in, certain ingredients that I leave out, and this is just kind of guac 101, back to basics, like basic bitchin'. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, we're gonna end on a sweet note, and that is an avocado pudding. Yes, avocado can be eaten for dessert. We can sweeten it up, make things rich. This is gonna be extra chocolatey, and oh my gosh, oh so rich, and I'm gonna top it with things that are gonna make it even more decadent. So get excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start with the avocado toast three ways. The first thing I'm going to do, it's my favorite ingredient on avocado toast, and that is pickled red onions. Glam cam. Let's show off this beautiful pink hue. I'm going to show you the most simple way to pickle basically all of your favorite vegetables. Uh, so you can use this going forward. And first up, all you're going to do is grab yourself a Dutch oven, a, uh, Dutch oven or a saucepan and put a cup and a half of distilled white vinegar in a cup of water. I'm going to actually start setting this on to boil. Uh, and the only ingredients you need really are just a quarter cup of white granulated sugar. Now, why sugar? Sugar is actually going to be the thing that makes your vinegar a little less potent and pungent. Sugar is also a natural preservative. So when you are canning, pickling, it's going to keep your vegetables fresh, crunchy a lot longer. So in goes the sugar, bloop. And the only reason why we're bringing this up to a boil is because we want to make sure that our sugar dissolves and our salt. Speaking of salt, here are awesome aromatics that I use. Again, this is a completely customizable situation. Uh, I use mustard seeds, about a half teaspoon, a teaspoon of coriander seeds. The mustard seeds are obviously going to provide that nice tang. The coriander is going to be a little bit more earthy. I've got a bay leaf in there, which provides a little bit of a menthol, minty little zing. Um, two teaspoons of sea salt, and then half a teaspoon of black peppercorns for a little bit of added spice. Uh, and that's just going to go right in. Like I said, completely customizable. If you want to do something like fennel seeds, if you want to put in red pepper flakes to make it a bit spicier, turmeric, uh, do what you want to do, boo. <laughs> That's what I say. You do you. Uh, I do want to also mention I just have a mason jar's worth of red onions, thinly sliced. Um, this was about, this yielded about one. It's a basic standard mason jar, and it was one full red onion. Last but certainly not least, I just have some sliced garlic cloves, two sliced garlic co cloves, nice and pungent and strong. It's just a great addition uh, to the tartness and sourness of your vinegar. So that goes right in. And I like to keep my garlic sliced because if you chop it up finely, it's going to obviously adhere to whatever vegetable you're going to pour this over. And that's not always what people like in their food. So at least when you slice it up, it's, you know, you can take them out really easily. Um, but yeah, that, that's it, you guys. Um, so you just keep giving it a good stir and you just want to make sure everything cooks down. You want to make sure your salt and your sugars dissolve. And then once that happens, 
speeding through it because we've got some things to go to. Uh, you take it off the heat and you're essentially just going to take your mason jar and ladle your pickling vinegar and spices and garlic into your mason jar. I'm going to show it to the camera too. What it just looks like in there. And can I also say the thing that's amazing about mustard seeds is that they will actually get really, really soft. And they are the things you want to adhere to your onions and your vegetables because it's just a nice little crunch uh, and a nice textural difference, adding it to things like avocado toast. Once you fill this up all the way, you want to make sure it gets to room temperature first to really make sure that these spices um, make ever, or infuse your vegetable. And then once it gets to room temperature, that's when you'll seal it, put it in the fridge, and you can have pickled anything literally within three hours. Amazing, right? These turn literally turn this pink after three hours in the fridge. Uh, there's some vegetables though, like okra and carrots that are a little bit harder and you may want to boil them down a bit because uh, they'll take a little bit uh, longer for that liquid to penetrate. But something like an onion, three hours. And okay, let's dive right into my three toasts. Let's actually first talk about why avocado is amazing. <laughs> there are two mainstream types of avocado. First being a Haas. That's everything that you see in front of me. They look like almost dinosaur eggs. They have like the scaly skin. These are, I will preface this by saying these are really small, really small, <laughs> like half the size of a standard one. I don't know what's going on um, with avocado season, which actually isn't a thing, and I'll get to that. But uh, you may want to double up if yours are this size. Um, I'm going to walk you through it, though. It's really not an issue with avocado toast. We just want to cover our toast. But for something like guacamole or this pudding that requires a specific number of avocados because there's a ratio involved, you may need to um, up it a bit. But uh, yeah, Haas and Florida are the two big ones. Florida's the big one that has the green skin and uh, it actually has less fat content. So if you're on a diet and you want a little bit less fat, go for a Florida one. However, the flavor is obviously gonna be a little bit milder. I should mention though, avocados are chock full of good fats, the monounsaturated fat that actually helps to lower your cholesterol. So in limited quantities, these are the good fats that you want on your diet. They're also, chock full of potassium, more potassium than a banana. Yeah, random fact of the day, bet you didn't know that. <laughs> and on top of that, they have a ton of fiber, which is great, obviously, to keep things normal, and it's good for your digestive health. Um, what else about avocados do I love? Oh, ripening. People are always like, oh my god, I hate that I got all these hard avocados that I can't use. There are two quick and easy ways to ripen an avocado faster. First being an easy way, I don't always recommend it, but you can wrap it in aluminum foil and put it in the oven on 200 degrees for about 10 minutes and it will actually soften the flesh. The second is to put it in a paper bag with an apple because an apple is going to release a natural gas called ethylene. I believe that's, well, I'm not an Einstein, but ethylene I'm sure is the name. Um, and when it releases that gas and they're in one contained space, it's going to speed up the ripening process. How to tell if an avocado is ripe? Well, you want it to have some give, but you want it to also be a little bit soft. Like this is perfect. You have some indentation, but not so mushy that it's, you know, it's going to be brown inside. Another trick is to actually take one that has a longer stem and break it off. And you'll be able to see sometimes if it's, if it's lighter, then it's usually ripe. If it's dark, like the skin of the avocado, it's not ready yet. So quick and easy tips. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna slice some avocados. The first one we're gonna make is just a standard one. And I feel like everyone has this gadget now. It, to me, it looks like a toucan or something, but it's OXO's three-in-one avocado slicer. This part slices, this part pits, or actually this part cuts it open in half, this part pits it, and this part slices it. Um, I will say again, these are really small, so it may not be the best tool and I may switch to my knife, but literally all you do is just go around your avocado like so, split it down the middle, nice and green like we want it to be. Now, if this pit was bigger, I would take this instrument and I would put it over the pit of the avocado and twist. That's not happening today. <laughs> so sorry, everybody. But, um, What's nice about them being smaller is I literally can just plop it right out. 
in the sink you go. Uh, same situation here for the slicing. This nice little slicing device gives you nice, even lines. If you're anything like me, you're a perfectionist. You want your avocado to look just as cute as it, oh God, how's I wording that? It needs to look as cute, as good as it tastes. Whoa, I clearly need to relearn how to speak. <laughs> You want it to look as cute as it's going to taste. That doesn't make any sense because things don't taste cute. <laughs> Holy crap. It is definitely a Thursday, everyone. <laughs> if I've ever seen one. But yeah, you would basically just go like this and you get perfect avocado slices. But because this is so tiny, I just prefer to honestly go in with a knife and do it myself. Same thing. But avocado hand slicing is a situation... <laughs> Um, I don't know if you read those articles a few years ago, like people were literally going to the ER because they were slicing their hands open. We don't want that. Um, but for this first iteration, I'm just going to take these slices and pile them on my avocado toast. Uh, my bread, that's something I want to talk about. Now, bread preferences, I know are it's completely dependent upon maybe your diet. We've got a lot of people who are gluten-free. Some people like something a little bit more soft. Some people like something that can get burnt and toasted. Um, it's totally up to you. You can use whatever you want. I love Ezekiel bread. I, it's one of the healthiest on the market. And I have to tell you, <laughs> pulling it out right now, this is like Bible approved. So <laughs> any of y'all are religious, like Jesus talked about this bread. Not really. It's called Ezekiel bread because the recipe is actually referenced in the Bible. I know, go figure. I, and I'm going to, they put this on the cover of their bag. Um, as described in the Holy Scripture verse, take also unto the wheat and barley and beans and lentils and millet and spelt and put them in one vessel and make bread of it. And that is what you get here with Ezekiel bread. There is no flour used and it's got every single essential amino acid. So it's five grams of protein per slice. I'm obsessed. I use it all the time. I actually don't own a toaster, BT dubs, because counter space is like very limited here. Um, so if you need to toast bread and you don't have a toaster, just put it on a baking sheet, put it in the oven 350, Five minutes, flip it, five minutes on the other side, and you'll get that nice crispy bread. Okay, going back to my first iteration of avocado toast. This is my standard one. I've got my slices down. I'm now just going to add some of these amazing pickled red onions. And um, I always like to add a protein. Now, an egg is my go-to. You can absolutely add bacon. Uh, I prefer a hard-boiled egg. You can soft boil. You can fry it. You can poach it if you like that nice runniness. It obviously makes an amazing texture play, but I'm just gonna slice up some hard boiled egg. Also, these are those eggs I keep talking about with the super pretty bright orangey yellow inside. That means you know they're organic, they're, you know they're fresh, and then you just put them right on top. Okay, now this is where we get a little bit fun here. What is avocado toast, or at least a standard one, without some red pepper flakes? So I'm just going to do a little bloop-de-bloop -bloop on top. I also have some truffle salt in here. Yeah, I know. She's bougie. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love adding, again, just different flavors. And the most important aspects of avocado toast are adding a citrus and a salt because it's super creamy it's super rich and dense the avocado is and you want something that's going to counter that so on top of all that i'm also going to add some freshness because with something cooked like the egg uh, i always want to go back to adding a fresh green and in this case it's going to be cilantro i know polarizing we've discussed this also it's a genetic thing i don't fault you if you hate it but just some nice cilantro on top and then last but certainly not least is to take yourself a lemon and give it that acidity that I said it demands. I'm just gonna show it to Glam Cam because I'm obsessed with this thing and you just squirt some lemon right on top. Perfect, avocado toast, version one. Second one, way more simple, but it's for our vegan crowd out there. And that is to just take a roasted garlic hummus. And um, I use hummus 
on everything in my life. <laughs> I dip carrots into it, crackers. I, I just, I'm hummus obsessed. So any excuse to put hummus, especially in a carbohydrate is a-okay by me. What I like to do in this situation is then grab myself the world famous Trader Joe's everything but the bagel sesame seasoning blend because this is going to make it taste just like an everything bagel glam cam y'all know this you can get it on amazon uh it's got sesame seeds it's got onion powder everything that's on an everything bagel poppy seeds what's great about putting this on hummus is that most hummuses as you know have tahini which is essentially sesame paste and these have sesame seeds in them so it's kind of like meta because <laughs> you're getting it in a bunch of different ways and all i do is just shake some on top um, and then go in with some more of my avocado this one i destroyed oopsies it's not always pretty but sometimes it's just as long as it tastes good <laughs> um but i will say your preference when it comes to avocado toast is going to dictate this if you like a chunkier like mashed up version a-okay if you like slices like we did with the first one that's fine too. Um, and then I also have chopped up some fresh green onions. So I'm just going to take this plate and put some right on top. So that's for all of my vegan friends. We don't want you to feel left out, even though I did dedicate an entire episode to you. <laughs> but that's just to show you, you can get a protein, uh, obviously through the chickpeas and the hummus and not sacrifice amazing tastes and flavors. I'm gonna wash really quick. I feel like I'm gonna do this a million times because avocado gets all over you, it seems like, when you're dealing with it. Last but certainly not least, I love a lox bagel. Salmon, cream cheese, onions, capers, and that is exactly what you can do here. Uh, I'm gonna take myself another avocado. Give it a cut, not slice my finger off. I don't want to be one of those people. This is what a perfect one looks like. It's nice and creamy and shiny and no brown. So good on you, avocado. <laughs> um, but this one I kind of want to mash up a bit. So I'm going to put this in my bowl. And I'm going to go in with my Rigby, y'all know it, my favorite uh, flatware set, satin gold, and give it a good mash. Sometimes you have to press it against your bowl if there aren't any other liquids around. Um, but what you can do, this is a trick, take some lemon juice and it'll make the mashing process a hell of a lot easier. But also keep it from browning too quickly. Um, once you've mashed it, it's just about forking it over. Now what I've already put on this bread is whipped cream cheese. Amazing, you can buy it whipped or you can whip it yourself. It's not the hardest thing to do if you have a hand mixer. Um, cool, I probably would have used the entire avocado, but for the sake of time, I just wanna show you conceptually how this operates. Cool, all right, I've got some smoked salmon that I'm just gonna gently fold on top. Gotta love it. Get some of these pickled onions. I'm gonna do this to glam cam too. Put some onions right on top. Now for a green moment, I've got some capers, which is gonna be nice and briny and salty. So I would cut back on the flaked salt that you may wanna put on top or that truffle salt. And then I'm gonna go in with some chives because what is a lox bagel without chives? And that's it. That is three versions of avocado toast that we made in what, less than 20 minutes? That's pretty awesome. I don't know. Sunday morning brunch. If you need to impress someone, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, God, I missed. That just reminded me how single I was. <laughs> okay, moving right along to guacamole. Now, we all have a guacamole that we love, a guacamole recipe, I'm assuming. And mine's pretty standard, but I want to explain why I leave certain things out and why I put certain things in. First, obviously, we want to cut up our avocados. And, you know, you, the proper way is to go in with your spoon and to spoon it out. I'll show you on camera like this and just, you know, dump them. Like, that's cute. But I, I'm so gross. 
<laughs> I just like to go in with my fingers and get messy. Um, probably not the best thing for camera. Um, <laughs> but that's like, I really, this is me. Like I said, these look like dinosaur eggs. I am the dinosaur in this room. <laughs> like Velociraptor-esque when it comes to <laughs> going through my avocado. I know people are probably watching this being like, what the heck? Or no, y'all probably can relate because what do I always say? Professional eater, not a professional chef. So I do what y'all do. I'm not here to be Emerald Lagasse. <laughs> um, but yeah, you want to just take these avocados and put them in your bowl. We're taking the pits out. This is like a mess, but I love doing it this way. <laughs> nobody has time for these. Um, actually, why am I washing my hands? I have two more. Um, nobody has time for this spoon situation. Also, whoa, I'm the cutting a lot of avocados today. My recipe typically calls for three, um, but because these are so small, that's why I'm gonna put four in. Actually, I may just keep it to three today because I think this is yielding a lot more flesh than I thought it would. Um, the skin's quite thin. So after this, I'll move on to my other ingredients. Sorry, I'm messy, I told you. You just also wanna make sure that that um, stem is not in any of these. Okay. We've got our avocado in the bowl. Let me just do another quick rinse. Now, was avocado one of those things that you guys hated as kids? It's my parents, I kind of boggled their mind when we'd make salads and I'd be plucking out the avocado. Like, that's the best part. Um, another fun fact I kind of have like some sort of avocado allergy. <laughs> Uh, I think it's actually more of a high fat at one all at one situation it happens with egg yolks. I can't just like bite into avocado toast all the time because I immediately get nauseated. It's like I need small bites. Guac though I'm fine with. Go figure. I don't know. Is there an allergist out there that wants to explain it to me? Maybe a gastro. <laughs> if so, I'll welcome your services. Okay, moving on. I'm going to do one Roma tomato. Now Roma is great because it's a little sweet and it's very fleshy. So it's gonna provide um, some more moisture to your guacamole. Um, and you just wanna give it a good chop. Feel free to experiment with other tomatoes. I've done heirloom, I've done even like grape and cherry tomatoes. Some of them when they're in season and super sweet, it is fabulous in a guacamole, just fabulous. Um, whoa, that was a rough chop. <laughs> but this is also what I love about my guacamole. I like to make my chopping, I, I err on the side of big because I want each flavor to stand out. Um, like this red onion. I love red onion. You want to do about half or a quarter of a cup um, of chopped red onion. Red onion's great because it's going to add some sweetness. It, Feel free to use a white onion, a yellow onion. That's going to be also really, really sweet. But um, I don't know. It's just I'm, I always go red, and I think the color adds to the experience as well. So let me glam cam it. That's what it looks like so far. We've got everything chopped. Um, I'd probably chop that up a little bit more, but you get the picture. <laughs> um, okay, now we're going to take about a quarter cup of cilantro and give that a nice chop as well. And even if you're spice averse, you need to absolutely put in one jalapeno, just remove the seeds, it makes it not spicy. If you really can't tolerate this, then I recommend using a hot sauce that's gonna be vinegar based and it's gonna dilute the taste. Okay, I use two lemons worth of juice. Why lemon instead of lime? Lemon is actually not as strong as lime juice. So again, it allows that creaminess to really shine uh, as opposed to the lime really just being too acidic. Um, and I don't want it to overpower. I really want the avocado to shine here. I want the tomato to shine here. I want you to crunch into the jalapeno and not have it super diluted with an acid. So uh, I'm team lemon all the way when it comes to guacamole. That's one of my secret tricks. And then last but certainly not least, we've got half a teaspoon of cumin and half a teaspoon of sea salt. Sea salt is 
a must. It's going to counter the spice. It's going to counter the creaminess of the avocado. And then from there, you're just going to take your, again, Rigby fork and go in and mash it. Um, the best type of guacamole is not one that is completely pureed, okay? Um, in my opinion, I would say in most uh, people's households, you would agree. And that's why a fork is much better than grabbing a food processor. So you literally, you just go in um, and give it some nice, you may need a little bit of elbow grease. This one may not have been as ripe as I want it to be, but what's good is that the liquids are gonna help to break it down. You just go in with your fork, smash it up, get a bicep workout, because I'm not going to the gym today. It is way too rainy, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> no, ma'am, this is my arm workout of the day. Um, and that's just how it is. If you have a potato masher, it works just as well. I clearly like to make things more difficult for myself. Um, but yeah, another question people have is, Joey, you're obsessed with garlic, you're Italian. Why is garlic not in this recipe? And um, good point. Again, it just goes back to, I think garlic overpowers a guacamole if you put it in it. Um, I rather have the sweet red onion add that uh, extra level of uh, sharpness. And um, yeah, that's just my vibe. But if you want garlic, by all means, put it in. Cool. Look how quick that was. That's like perfect consistency. You've got chunks of the guacamole or chunks of the avocado. And um, yeah. A fork, easiest thing. Don't do a food processor, people. Save your time and whatever. Um, okay, how do I serve this? With tricks, of course. And I love this cute little dish. It's uh, from Amazon Stoneware Collection. You put the dip right there and scoop out. You can put carrots, jicama, whatever you want to dip into your guacamole. But what's even more exciting is what I got my hands on and that is the guac lock, folks. <laughs> if you want fresh guacamole, this contraption is the way to go. What you basically just do is fill the top and uh, lock in the three sides and put it on top of this thing. And you just push down. And what it's going to do, it's going to put the guacamole or make it force it upward while also eliminating the air out of the top. And then once all of the air is out and everything's compressed, you just lock it on top, put it in your fridge. You'll have an extended life for your guacamole. If you don't have one of these handy contraptions, there are many other things you can do. Obviously, the acidity of your lemon or your lime is going to help preserve it and not make it brown. But you can also put the pit in. That makes it last a little bit longer. Or this is a really random tip that people don't realize. You can actually add a bit of water to the top of your guacamole and it's not going to go into it. And once you remove it from your fridge and you want to eat it, you just dump the water out, scoop out your guacamole, and it tastes fresh. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, let's just make this cute and scoop some out. Sorry. <laughs> I keep forgetting. I have this wonderful glam cam. She's pretty. Look at that. I love those chips, too. Colorful. It's a rainbow. <laughs> Very on brand for me. <laughs> but yeah, super simple. Okay, let's move on to dessert. I know we're running somewhat short on time, so I want to make sure you see this. Super easy. First, you're going to take, uh, usually it's two, I would be, but let's do two. Um, you know what? I'm kind of stupid right now because I don't want onion flavoring to get into my pudding, so I'm going to use a different knife. <laughs> um, yeah. You're just going to take two of your avocados. I need like an av like a personal avocado slicer. Producers. <laughs> that would be nice. That would save a lot of time, right? Or maybe I, it's hard because you don't want to like pre-slice your avocados either because if you leave them out for too long, they're going to be brown. I guess it wouldn't have mattered with this recipe because we're adding chocolate to it anyway. But yeah, this is my disgusting way of, again, opening up an avocado. Um, but this is a really awesome recipe. If you are vegan, especially I'm using a uh, flaxseed milk. So, um, it's going to keep things vegan. You can by all means use cow milk, 
Um, if you're on a diet, this is also a great diet food because you get to control. That was the pet. <laughs> we'll get that later. <laughs> Uh, you can use whatever sweetener you want. I am going to be using maple syrup today because I like that nice, robust flavor. But you can use stevia, you can use honey, you can use actual sugar if you're treating yourself, whatever you want to do. But first, you're taking those avocados, you're putting them in, in your food processor, you're adding that milk I told you about, flaxseed milk for me. I bet a macadamia nut milk would be amazing, really creamy. You're gonna then take a teaspoon of vanilla extract because vanilla goes extremely well with chocolate and brings out all of the chocolate notes and flavors. You're then gonna take four tablespoons of cocoa powder and I add about a half a teaspoon, there's a little avocado in there, half a teaspoon of cinnamon and half a teaspoon of sea salt. And then lastly, there is that nice maple syrup. And as we mentioned from another episode, the darker the maple syrup, the stronger it's gonna be. I prefer dark. That's literally it. Those are the only ingredients. So I'm going over here to the food processor and just gonna blend it all up. Part of the noise. <laughs> I don't think you'll be able to hear me if I'm talking right now. So. <laughs> All right, that should do it. Wonderful, yes. Okay, I'm gonna scoop it out and take out this. Okay. I have made the most ginormous mess in the entire world. <laughs> Um, also, this is customizable as well. If you want something a little bit thinner, add more milk. If you want it thicker, almost mousse-like, add less milk, plain and simple. So I'm going to scoop this out to show you how it looks just like a pudding. These are those great cook uh, plateware as well, the cook uh, wide bowls. Same for that serving tray. I love the line. Again, cook with a K like for Kardashian. <laughs> It's just going to be so rich, so creamy. See that? It actually looks like pudding. Doesn't taste like avocado, I promise you. And my favorite way to top this is to add, obviously, some coconut. Yum. Some pistachios, because why not add three layers of fat on something that's already fattening? <laughs> it's dessert after all. And my secret hidden ingredient, not so hidden, because I'm revealing it now, is my cacao nibs. And it's basically um, cocoa beans dried, and they're, it tastes just like dark chocolate, unsweetened, but um, a little bit more bitter. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's just going to enhance that chocolatey flavor that's already in that pudding. Look how pretty. Doesn't it look like some fancy, fancy dessert? And that's it. I want a bite of this though. That's the one thing I'm going to eat to camera without having my allergy. Oh my gosh. That wasn't an exaggeration. That's a real, oh my God. I'm gonna get back to that. But that's basically it folks. I'm sorry I made such a ginormous mess. I'm sure you're the same way in the kitchen. Um, but if you want more awesome recipes, as always, please be sure to go to inthenow.com. I'm going to continue to be here every week, Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And um, next week, I'm getting back to my roots and not the gray ones that are growing in my hair. I am cooking Italian. I'm going to make a pasta with a Pomodoro base that's going to be converted into a uh, olive vodka. I'm going to make my mom's famous Sicilian Caesar salad. That's not Sicilian. I'll tell you that joke next week. And last but certainly not least, we do a giveaway every week on this show for a signed copy of my cookbook, Basic Bitchin. And last week's winner was at Melly357. So congratulations. If you'd like to sign up, follow me on social media at Joey Scladani and you'll see all the details. But um, until next time, everybody, enjoy your avocado and have a fabulous weekend.